I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today about FreeSky F-Port. Some of you guys are asking me if F-Port is like FreeSky's answer to Crossfire, or what is FreeSky F-Port? Well, I'm going to tell you, and you're going to find out why F-Port is kind of a big deal, but it's not as big a deal as I wish it was. Stay tuned. If you fly FreeSky, you're probably familiar with the two signal wires that you usually wire from your receiver to your flight controller. The first one is the S-Bus wire, which carries your transmitter sticks and switches and all your, your channel information from your transmitter to the flight controller. So you can tell the quad what you want it to do. And the other is the smart port telemetry wire, which carries sensor information, you could say, from the flight controller back to the transmitter. Sensor information like battery voltage, like milliamp hours, etc. Many people don't wire up the smart port wire if they have an on-screen display because you can see the same information. But I think smart port is essential for two reasons. Number one, because the Tyrannus can give you audible alerts. It can say a voltage low or whatever. Uh, and that's useful if you're flying really, you're really paying attention to your flying and you're not really looking at your on-screen display. It can be good to hear an audible alert. But the real reason why I think smart port is a, is a big, big deal is because smart port is not just carrying sensor information from the transmitter or from the flight controller to the transmitter. It's carrying, it's a bi-directional data stream between the transmitter and the flight controller. And so if you're running Lua scripts on your Tyrannus, you can do things like change your PIDs, change your rates, uh, even if you use uh, change your video transmitter settings, your channel and your, your transmit power, all from the Tyrannus. So smart port and SBUS, those are our two signal wires that are coming from the receiver to the flight controller. And there are some problems with this. The biggest problem is that these are both what's referred to as an inverted serial protocol. And without going into too much detail, what, me? Ha ha. Without going into too much detail, an inverted serial protocol needs an inverted UART, which is a serial interface on the processor. Now, if you have an F3 or an F7 processor on your flight controller, this is not an issue because the UARTs on F3 and F7 processors can support inversion natively. You could just like tick a, tick a box and either it's on or it's off. They don't really care. So when you're wiring up your FreeSky receiver to an F3 or an F7, you just pick any spare UART receive pad or transmit pad and you wire up smart port, you wire up SBUS and you get on with your day. But these days, most of us are flying F4s, and F4, for some reason, doesn't support inversion natively on its UARTs, and this is a big hassle for those of us who fly FreeSky. It's a big hassle because the vendors who design these boards have to put inverters on the boards for us to use, and then they have to say, you may put SBUS on this pad right here, and only that pad, and if you lift that pad, if you rip it off, if you damage it, if for anything goes wrong, too bad, you're screwed. And the same is true for SmartPort. You have you can only do it exactly how they have set it up to, do, to be, and if anything goes wrong, you're just out of luck. Another problem is that SBUS uses a receive pad on the UART, and SmartPort uses a transmit pad on the UART. So you would think that you could use the same UART. Use the transmit pad for SBUS, or for SmartPort, use the receive pad for SBUS, no problem. But actually it doesn't work like that. You can't use a transmit and a receive pad on the same UART for two different functions. So you have to tie up two UARTs. And there's only, like a lot of these flight controllers only have like three UARTs, some of them have less. So that's kind of a pain in the ass. F-Port addresses these problems. And when people say, what, what is F-Port? Ooh, what, what can tell us what F-Port is? Make a video about F-Port. On some level, I'm like, guys, F-Port is not actually that exciting. What F-Port does is it combines SmartPort and SBUS into a single protocol, a single wire and a single UART. And it gets rid of the inversion issue. With F-Port, the protocol can either be inverted or uninverted. You could just set it up. So if you had an F4 flight controller, you can put F port on any UART pad that you have available. So 
in that sense, F port is a little bit of a convenience thing. It's nice to run one fewer wire. It's nice to not have to deal with the inversion issue. And it certainly is nice to have one more spare UART for things like GPS or smart audio, or heck, if you just lift a pad by accident, you can just go to a different pad and, and be good to go. But when I first heard about F port, I thought, oh, this is FreeSky's answer to Crossfire. Because Crossfire has, that's the Team Black Sheep, the TBS protocol that so many people are installing on their quads. And I'm looking for, I'm working on getting my own set up and everybody's out of stock. Huh. Uh, I'm working on getting my own and going to test it out and document it for you guys. But one of the things about Crossfire is that it has a much, much faster refresh frequency. It, it's at, I think it's 150 hertz at the fastest. And it has very, very low latency. And people say this makes a difference in, well, they say it makes a difference in the flight field. Some people say it makes a big difference. So when I heard that FreeSky had sort of redone their whole receiver protocol, I was like, oh yeah, 150 hertz, FreeSky keeping up with TBS. No, 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 uh, of course. Yeah, of course. So F port is just smart port plus S bus on a single wire and no more inversion hassle. And while that's kind of a big deal, it's not as big a deal as I wish it was. Free Sky, come on, keep up. Well, how hard is it? Whatever, look at what the TBS did. Just make your own version of that. Right. Oh no, now I'm supporting cloning again. Don't clone TBS, just make your own awesome thing, but make it have low latency and a fast refresh rate and other, yeah. Oh boy, here we go with the cloning thing again. So how do you get F port? Well, if you wait long enough, you'll just be able to buy a receiver with it. But right now, if you want F port, you've got to flash a custom firmware onto your receiver and only certain receivers are supported. RXSR, X4R, SB, XM Plus, I think. Um, and you have to get one of the pre-release versions of Betaflight 3.3 because Betaflight 3.2 doesn't support it. So you got to get that stuff. You got to flash it to your receiver. You got to flash it to your board and if you know how to do those things, then I'm going to put a link to the wiki, which tells how to do it down in the video description. And if you don't know how to do those things, just, you know, keep doing what you're doing or, you know, muddle through if you can. But if you just wait a little bit longer, it's going to be out. There's going to be receivers coming from FreeSky with F port already installed. Betaflight will be out and it won't be as much of a hassle. But now you know what F port is. And why F port, especially in this day and age of F4 processors that don't have enough UARTs and don't have inversion, why F port is kind of a big deal, but not as big a deal as I wish it was. I wish it was more like Crossfire. Maybe we should just all get Crossfire. Okay, bye. Happy flight.